Hi, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to show you guys how to add uh, guests, users into your Teams and channels in the Microsoft Teams application. Uh, if you find this video useful and informative, then you know what to do. And with that said, let's jump on over to Microsoft Teams. Okay, so here I am just inside the Microsoft Teams application. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a guest user into um, this particular team here for that office guy. Um, so this is actually very, very straightforward, but you do have to make sure that you have the right settings enabled. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to go about doing it um, and what the differences will be when you are successfully uh, adding a guest user in versus what it looks like when you are unsuccessful in adding a user. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on the ellipses option for that particular team. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add member. Okay, so the same functionality as you would normally work for uh, a, you know, a regular organization member. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and type the email address of the guest user that we would like to be added into the team. And um, so for that, I'm going to go ahead and type that office guy uh, UK at gmail.com. Okay, now a couple of things are happening here. Now, if you're not seeing this new pop-up dialog box just here, um, then it probably means that you haven't got the correct setting enabled, okay? Um, if, however, you are seeing this, then you've been successfully able, you will be successfully able to add that guest user into your team and your corresponding channels. Um, so what you have to do is type the email address in, see if this box pops up if it does click it um, and then you'll notice it goes into like a uh, they call it like a, a pill shaped um, box with the, the t next to it to symbolize the avatar icon um, and basically it has in brackets guest and that basically means that that user will be added into the team and again you can add multiple different email addresses uh, and multiple different organizational uh, members into the team before clicking add once you click add here it's going to click go ahead and add this user into the team and the corresponding channels now unlike regular members um, you're unable to change their permission levels it's always going to be a guest um, they are not going to be able to be member or an admin okay so just bear that in mind um, but with that done you can go ahead and click on close now what we can do is we go ahead and click on the ellipses again and manage team and um, from here we're going to have a little drop down menu and we can see that all of the members inside this team okay um, so Microsoft uh, team members will automatically be added and removed um, to reflect your uh, active directory. Uh, this team has guests, okay? So just bear that in mind as well, depending on what settings are happening in the background, um, you know, you wanna monitor to make sure that you keep uh, all your various kind of guests and members uh, active here. So we can see that I am the owner. Uh, we have one guest user um, and we have one uh, organizational member as well. And he is a, a member there. So the question now is how do you go about doing it if you're unable to add a email address directly into your uh, team via add member function here. So if you're unable to add an email address, then what you need to do is actually head on over um, into the, if I just minimize that, uh, office.com. Okay, so go over to a browser uh, and go and search for office.com. Now, you do have to be an admin in order to have access to the admin center uh, as an application here. So you've got a couple of different ways of getting to this. Um, so you've got to click on uh, this icon here, uh, which will load up this, and then you'll find the admin center here or under all apps. Uh, and then you can scroll and find the admin center. Now, if you don't have the admin center, you're gonna have to get in touch with the user that does have the admin center. Um, which will be an administrator uh, for your network. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on admin and that's going to load up the admin center for um, the office guy. Okay, so that office guy's admin center. Now, there's a few things here that, uh, you know, for anyone who's unfamiliar with how this looks, um, what you first thing you want to do in order to actually just enable the one setting that you're looking for without potentially damaging anything else, is you wanna head over to the users section here and choose from the drop down menu, guest users. If we click on guest users, we're then able to see here 
that we have that office guy UK as a guest member. Now, um, in order to actually uh, add guest members, uh, you're gonna want to go ahead and click on manage teams settings, and that's going to open up uh, this little section here uh, where you want to then toggle this button that says allow guest access in teams, okay? Um, with that access enabled, um, you're going to be able to uh, make sure that you're able to add those email addresses into the uh, Microsoft Teams add members section, okay? Um, and then you'll be able to obviously add those users. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is you want to go over to the Teams Admin Center. So this is obviously just a Microsoft 365 Admin Center. There is a Teams Admin Center, which will then allow you to adjust the features that guests can use. So if we go ahead and click on that, um, this is then going to take me over to the Teams Admin Center. Uh, and from here, we can see that we have Allow Guest Access Enabled. Okay, um, and then we can see all of the different things that, that they can do. So um, they can participate in meetings, um, they can share entire screens, um, they, or we can do single applications, entire screens or disabled entirely. Um, we can allow the meet nows or not allow the meet nows. Um, we can edit sent messages, uh, delete sent messages, chat messages, uh, use a Giphy's in conversations um, and obviously all these various settings. So you do want to make sure that you go through the settings here to make sure that they are in line with your organizational um, you know, preferences. You don't want to go ahead and allow guest access in and then they start to you know utilize a lot of other functionality that you might not normally want people to be using and um, such as making private calls or whatever it may be. So do make sure that you go through these uh, settings properly um, in both the uh, admin uh, Microsoft 365 Admin Center as well as the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. Uh, make sure you have both of those things enabled. Now, from here, uh, under the guest users, uh, it, you just have to click this hyperlink to take you to the Teams Admin Center. Um, if that is not enabled, um, you know, but you want to do both anyway and make sure it's fully in sync. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is once you enable that setting, it can take anywhere between two and 24 hours to take effect. So you do want to make sure you have plenty of time. Um, you know, so you, you know, make sure you have that activated um, and then you can go back into Microsoft Teams and add the additional email addresses. And we'll know that it's been successful when you're able to select that email address and it basically then appears as a guest user for adding. If you're still unable to add um, a user, then you'll just have to wait a little bit longer. Um, it shouldn't take any longer than 24 hours, however. So hopefully that will then get you going with guest users. Um, and guys, it's, um, like I say, it's a relatively simple process, but you do have to make sure that you have the right settings enabled in the Microsoft uh, 365 Admin Center and the Microsoft Teams Admin Center as well. You want to make sure that those things are fully aligned. Um, if you found this video useful, informative, then you know what to do. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video.